The Silo Wing 3s are known to be some of the best fans on the market, if not the best fan on the market. But today, Be Quiet has brought out the Silent Wing 4 and the Pro 4. On the front of the boxes, they both look very similar in all honesty, and you probably wouldn't spot the differences by just looking at them. But the basics is, other than saying Pro 4 and the standard 4, it also says on the Pro model, this is a legendary, silent, epic performance and features, where the standard version says, no compromise, silence and performance. The back of the boxes, well, there isn't much to see other than QR code and lots of writing, which is that small, you need a magnifying to see, and it's grey writing on a black background, which makes it even harder to see. Okay, so inside the boxes, they're both very similar with one slight difference. So, first of all, the box itself, as you can see here, when you open it up, it's got multilingual instructions in here or information. Then you've got an accessories box inside there. And you've also got a box what the fan comes in. So a lot of cardboard, but not a lot of plastic, which is a good thing. The only plastic was basically what the screws came in. Uh, inside, obviously, the big box, you've got the fans. Again, they look slightly different because the corners are different. So it's not until you look at the back where you see the huge difference, though. Uh, you've got a manual and warranty information. You've got two lots of screws there. And then you've got extra corner pieces or different corner pieces the silent wings 4 comes with one additional set uh, where the pro 4 comes with two additional sets that's so you can fit it differently depending uh, on your case or cooler you're attaching it to okay so let's have a look at the silent wings 4 that's the non-pro version first and look at some of the highlights i'm not going to go through all the specifications because you can find every single bit on the website but we're just going to go through some of the main features so first thing is it's got a new blade arrangement and smaller tip clearance for improved performance on heat sinks and radiators which basically means the blades come all the way to the edge of the case and with less of a gap so less air can basically come back through it's also got a six pole fan motor for less power consumption and vibration, which is pretty good. It's virtually inaudible operation at regular speed, according to Be Quiet. It's got fluid dynamic bearing, which enables super long life span of 300,000 hours. It's got a higher maximum RPM than the Silent Wings 3, and it's user friendly mounting mechanism for easy installation with two mounting options. Now the Silent Wing Pro 4 has all the features that the standard Silent Wings 4 has, but these are additional. So you've got a switch on the back which allows changing between medium high and ultra high speeds in a second, which is pretty good. You've got a higher maximum RPM range as well. You've got three mounting corner solutions instead of the two. Uh, which allows you to use any case, radio optimized, anti-vibration, mounting, plastic mounting, blah, blah, blah. You've got lots of ways of mounting it. And it's got a premium sleeve cable with an easy to handle four pin connector. Okay, so let's have a look at both fans side by side. So as you can see, the blades are ribbed, very similar to the previous Silent Wings the fans we've seen in the past. Very similar design in that respect. There's no RGB lighting on these models or anything like that. What you'll notice straight away is the corners or these bits probably look a little bit different. They are and they're not. It's because they're interchangeable. So you can actually pull this corner piece off here by pressing down these two little bits here and pulling out, which in all honesty, I find very difficult to do. It's, uh, to give you a rough idea, it's, there we go, one's coming undone. There we go. So the corner will pop off. And then you can interchange the corners with a slightly different corner so you can either screw it in or use their uh, included attachments and so forth and you can do that on the pro version as well the pro version does give come with it an additional option which is the one what's fitted to it which is more of a, a thicker corner more of a squared corner uh, than these rounded ones so as you can see they do look slightly different especially the hole so that one's where you would screw in using a traditional case screw where this one is where you'd use their mounting options, what come in the plastic bags. So again, they just push on. They can be a little bit hard to get off, I found, but uh, generally you'll be doing that once and then you'll be building your machine up, so you won't need to do it again. The cable sleeves are 50 centimeters long on both of them, but they are slightly different. This one's more of a braided 
um, quite a thicker, looser braiding on the actual cable with a traditional connection on the end for your PWM fan connector, where the Pro version is a thinner braided sleeve um, with more of a, I don't know, higher quality PWM connector on the end. will not probably make much of a difference. Might look a little bit nicer in your case, potentially, uh, but otherwise pretty much very similar. So otherwise to look at, they look very similar on the top. Now, when we turn it to the back, there is one big difference on the Pro model and the non-Pro model. I don't know if you can see it straight away, and it's nothing to do with the frame. It's actually here. It's a little switch. This one doesn't have one. You can change it between medium, high, and ultra high, or whatever they call it, um, speeds, so you can adjust the actual how fast the fan actually works. Um, which obviously is going to be a little bit noisier as well. So you can tune it to your liking. Obviously the PWM still works. If you've got it on ultra mode or whatever they're calling it, um, your case or your motherboard, should I say, will slow the fan down to whatever speeds. But obviously when it's going flat out, it's going to be a lot more noisier, but also it's going to cool a lot better. And we're going to test all the three different modes on there. So that's pretty good. Where the standard version, so the Silent Wings 4, doesn't have that option it just runs at its set rpm which will put those details on the screen uh, just above so you can see the differences but otherwise looks pretty good the only catch i've got with the option on the back with a switch um, i would have preferred to see it on the edge somewhere and the reason being is if you've got this attached to a radiator in your computer case let's just say my hand's a radiator and you screw it on like that you can't get to the switch You've got to disassemble the actual radiator to actually change the switch if you wanted to change it. So that is a sort of a positive. You've got the option, but I'm not a fan of the placement on the center. I know why it's there, because it's right next to the motor, but if there was a way to actually position it on the edge of the casing somewhere, so you could easily just reach in your case and flick a switch. Okay, down to testing mythology first. Now, we've tested this on a water cooler. So what we've done is basically got two identical fans of each one, put them on a 280 millimeter water cooler, which is also from Be Quiet, so we can actually test the actual performance, how it cools the CPU. Now, all testing is done on the same machine, so the only difference between each test is the fans themselves. The machine is also disconnected from the internet, so there's no chance of anything running in the background like updates and so forth which can affect the results we're also in an air conditioned room and the temperature is kept at a consistent 21.5 degrees celsius the machine we're testing it on is basically a 12700k intel processor so it can get quite warm and you've also got a nzxt N5 motherboard along with a GeForce 3070 and so forth, but those aren't going to affect the test results. So on to testing. So in this first test, we test the processor with the fans running at 50% speed. So it gives you a rough idea how the fans perform at a lower speed. Again, room temperature is 21 and a half degrees and the tests are run for 30 minutes using Cinebench. And as you can see here, the Silent Wing 3 is actually quite cool, a lot cooler than the Silent Wing 4 and the Silent Wings 4 Pro running at medium speed. But as soon as you stick the Pro on the high or the ultra speed, then obviously the temperatures drop. Again, very similar story here when we look at the maximum temperature rather than the average on the last slide. The actual Silent Wing 3 performs or outperforms the Silent Wing 4 and the Silent Wing 4 Pro on medium, but as soon as you stick it on high or ultra speed, it does speed up. One thing to bear in mind, I've not mentioned how loud these are at the moment and we'll get to that in a few seconds because it does affect the results in some way. So once we turn the fan speed up to 100%, you can see here, again, a very similar trend. The Silent Wing 3 was cooler than the Silent Wing 4 and the Silent Wing Pro 4 uh, as well running at medium. But as soon as you stick it on high or ultra speed, then you can see it does drop the temperature by a couple of degrees. But again, the Silent Wing 3 is generally doing pretty well to keep up against the Silent Wing 4s. 
Now we do the same thing here and this is the max temperature the CPU gets up to rather than the average again. Uh, and you can see here, similar story, the Silent Wing 3 comes in at 75 degrees, the Silent Wing 4 comes in at 78. And then as soon as you start putting the Silent Wing 4 Pro uh, on the high or ultra setting, the temperatures do drop and get better results than the Silent Wing 3 does which gives you a rough idea. Which leads us on to the last test, and this is actually the decibel rating. And as you can see here, the decibel rating of the room is 37.4, so this is basically the decibels over room audible levels. So the Silent Wing 3 here comes in quite loud at nine decibels. So it does make it a lot louder than the Silent Wing 4, which comes in at one decibel. We couldn't hear it over the room noise. Um, you had to really stick your ear next to it. And the same with the Silent Wings Pro 4, um, when you put you, um, put it on the medium setting, but as soon as you put it onto the uh, ultra or the high setting, then it does get a little bit louder. Um, bear in mind, obviously, the Silent Wing 4 uh, and the Pro 4 running at medium run a lot quieter um, than the standard Silent Wing 3, which means the new models are a lot quieter than the older one but they don't generally cool as well again between the temperatures you may be looking five degrees here three degrees there difference but as soon as you go to the pro model and stick it on the high or the extreme you're getting roughly a same sort of decibel late, uh, rating as the silent wing standard free uh, but you are getting better temperatures so you've got to make a trade-off if you want the really cool uh, machine then you need the pro model on high or extreme or even the silent wings free the older ones but if you're wanting really quiet where you can't hear it you could get the silent wings four or the pro version running on medium but in all honesty if you're going to run the pro version on medium you might as well just go for the standard silent wings four so in conclusion, you've got lots of options here. You could stick with the Silent Wings 3. You probably won't notice much of a difference in temperatures, but it is a lot, lot louder than, for example, the equivalent Silent Wings 4 or the Pro running on medium. And even when you stick the Pro on high, it comes in just a fraction, I'm talking 0.1 degree, or should I say 0.1 decibel, quieter than the Silent Wings 3 but performs better. So I think you've got something for everyone here. So depends on the price of the threes to fours when everything's released and everything like that. But you may have more of a, a value option with good cooling with a three. You've got the four, which is really quiet, but doesn't perform as well. And then you've got the pro version, which you can pretty much set up however you like it. The only things I didn't like um, with the pro ones is a switch where it's located. Because obviously if you have to, like we did on our testing, remove it from the radiator you've got to, uh, to change the switch. So you've got to basically remove the whole fan, unscrew it all, change the switch, be switch between medium, high and ultra setting or extreme, however you want to call it. So that's the major negative. Uh, I would have preferred to see the switch on either the cable itself or on the edge of the fan where you could position it in your case and you could take the side off and just flick it one way or another. But again, it's more than likely, once you've put it in the machine and set it as medium, high or ultra, you're probably not going to change it again unless you're someone like me who likes to change things every five minutes but otherwise I must admit you've got something for everyone you've got high performance you, you've also got quietness you've also got unique fitting options as well uh, and all that I can't do anything but highly recommend these products from NZXT